Hello, and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. In this lesson, we are going to be reviewing advanced adjusting entry analysis. So we're going to step this up a bit, and we're going to make it a little bit more complicated than it was when you originally learned about adjusting entries. If you would like to access this spreadsheet and follow along with what we go over here today, I'm going to include a link to that in the description below. Also, I'm going to include a link to our website where we have additional practice quizzes and other items that you can use to review this concept as well. So let's get started. For each of these scenarios, we are going to determine what the appropriate journal entry, or I should say adjusting entry, would be at the end of the year. So scenario one, we have Get That Bag Company purchasing $1,200 of supplies. However, they recorded this purchase as supplies expense. So when they made this purchase, and rather than recording it as supplies, which is probably what you were originally taught to do, they recorded it as supplies expense. Now it tells us that $200 of the supplies were left over at year end. So what I usually recommend with these, and there's a few different ways to tackle them, but I recommend taking a look at one, what we did, in this case, we debited supplies expense. And then two, taking a look at the additional piece of information that they give us. In this case, they're telling us that 200 of those supplies were left over. Well, that $200, would that be the supplies expense for the year? Or, are, sorry, are they telling us the supplies expense balance that they're looking at for the year? Or are they telling us the supplies balance that we should have at the end of the year? And if we have 200 of those supplies left over, that is the ending balance we are trying to achieve in supplies, right? Which essentially means that if we have 200 left over, we must have used 1,000, right? So just keep that in mind. So the first thing I usually say is, okay, well, how are we going to bring our supplies from essentially zero to 200? Well, here's our adjusting entry. We are going to be debiting supplies for 200. So let's fill that in. And as you know, our debits must equal our credits. And now we have this $1,200 balance in supplies expense, which we know is wrong because we just said we didn't use up 1,200, we only used up 1,000. So essentially our credit, let's go ahead and fill it in and then I'll show you, supplies expense for 200, let's credit that. What would be our new balance in supplies expense? There we go. And we just said 1,000 is what we used up during the period. Okay. So again, go ahead and I recommend T accounts for these. I think it's so much easier to kind of dig through what's really happening in these scenarios, right? So we know that we went, had to go from zero to 200 supplies that were left over during the period. So we debited supplies. The other side of that is bringing down our supplies expense to the amount that was actually used. Uh, let's try scenario two. Get that bad company, purchased one year of insurance on May 31st, and they recorded this insurance expense. Okay, so let's see. Let's put our amount in there. How much did they pay? Let me take a look at my notes. Purchase one year of insurance for $2,400. All right, now let's dig into this. So this company purchased one year of insurance on May 31st for $2,400, and they recorded all $2,400 as insurance expense. That's probably different from what you would have done, right? Most of the time when we're taught that we are purchasing insurance in advance, it's a future economic benefit, so it'd be prepaid insurance, but let's just talk about it a little bit here. Notice that unlike our first scenario, they're not telling us how much expired or how much was left over, so really, we have to figure that out ourselves. Um, so first things first, let's figure out the months expired. That would probably help us, right? So if we take a look at the scenario that we have here, move this over just a little bit so we have more space. If we're taking a look at the scenario we have here, um, we're noticing that we purchased it on May 31st. So if it is the end of the year, December 31st, that means that if we are going through the whole calendar, January, February, March, April, May, June expired, July expired, August, September, October, November, December. So seven months have expired. Let's do that again. If we purchased it on May 31st, that means that June, July, August, September, October, November, and December have expired. That's seven months. 
So seven months have expired. So how much is left? Five. So essentially, uh, we are we should at this point already know that expired insurance is supposed to go into insurance expense. Any months that we still have a benefit for will go into prepaid insurance. So next, let's figure out how much this twenty four hundred would be per month, right? So we know that it's uh, twenty four hundred for the whole year. And we have 12 months in a year, so that would be $200 per month. All right, so uh, let's start with the months expired. It's $200 per month, seven months have expired. So the amount that we need to expense for the current year is $1,400, $1,400. Dollars. So really, we can just kind of stick with this part right here. I have 2400 in insurance expense right now. I need to bring it to 1400. Right. Now this is where it's really important that you know normal balances and where they should go. Insurance expense has a normal balance of debit. So how am I going to bring this from a $2400 debit balance down to a 1400 debit balance? I'm going to credit it by 1000. So let's go ahead and put that in. Okay. Now, the five months left, that has to go into prepaid insurance. Right now, we have nothing in prepaid insurance. We didn't put anything in there. So five times two, that 200, that gives us 1,000. And there is our debit, which we kind of already knew because we got the first half. Notice if you get the first half, it's pretty easy to fill in the rest. You're simply going to fill out the rest of the adjusting entry like you learned before. It just might look a little flip from what you're used to seeing. Let's take a look at scenario number three. We have get that bag received an advance payment of $3,600 for 12 months rent on October 1st, and they put it into rent revenue, except really quickly, they credited that. Sorry, they would never debit that because they're receiving the payment. That would have been cash and rent revenue. So <clears throat> we probably already know from practice that if we're receiving an advance payment, right, that would be some unearned revenue. In this case, unearned rent revenue. However, they recorded it in rent revenue. Interesting. And uh, rent revenue is a credit, right? So they would have debited cash and they credited rent revenue, which probably we're not super comfortable uh, with if we have a really strong foundation in adjusting entries, right? Normally, whenever we would have that advance payment, we would credit unearned rent revenue to recognize that we owe the tenant the right to live there. Now, also keep in mind that Get That Bad Company is receiving this advance payment. Right. So that means that in this case, the company is the landlord. Right. So uh, back on October 1st, debit cash credit in this case, rent revenue. We need to fix it. Right. So we need to sit there and say, OK, so how much during the year, um, how much rent was actually uh, used? Right. Let's not even call it uh, used, though. Um, let's say rent used by tenant right just to make it super clear so rent used by tenant give me a second i want to make this a little bit bigger okay all right so i need to figure out how much of this rent was used by the tenant. And let's talk about months at this point, right? So if they gave us this on October 1st, and this is for 12 months. So on as of December 31st, we allowed this tenant to live in the place they are renting during October, November, and December. So three months. So three months were used by the tenant. So now we have to determine of this amount, how much is left over. Okay, that looks a little cleaner. So rent used by tenant, three months. Rental months remaining, in this case, the last nine months, right? 
So we have determined for those three months and nine months, where is it supposed to go? Well, if the rent was used by the tenant, if the tenant stayed for those three months, then those three months is what we should have in rent revenue. Remember, that tenant lived there for three months. That means we get to record three months of revenue for that rent. Now, the rental months that are remaining, right, the January, February, March, April, May, so on and so forth of next year, that's unearned rent revenue. We owe the tenant the right to stay there. So let's figure out what is the three months that we are able to record as revenue and what's the nine months that we owe. So if it was $3,600 for a whole year, then that is $300 per month. So now if it is $300 per month, let's use the rent used by tenant. So the tenant used three months. That means we get to record three months of rent revenue, three, three times 300. So we get to record $900 of rent revenue. And here's where we have the issue. We put 3600 in there. We really only earned 900. So how are we going to take this from 3600 down to 900? So we are going to debit it for the difference of 2700. Let's go ahead and put that in. And I know this might seem so uncomfortable debiting rent revenue because usually we're crediting rent revenue, but in this case, we're taking out the 2,700 that we did not yet earn. We put way too much into rent revenue and we're trying to fix it as of December 31st, the end of the year. Now, unearned rent revenue, a liability currently has zero. So we have to ask ourselves, well, how are we going to record that we're going from zero to the nine months that are remaining? So in this case, we have nine months remaining at $300 uh, per month. I'm pretty sure you can see where this is going. 2,700, how are we going to bring unearned rent revenue from zero to 2,700? Credit it for the 2,700. So just like I was kind of saying, if you get half of it, you're probably going to be able to fill out the other half as long as you're comfortable with the scenarios here. Now, if you're struggling with basic adjusting entries, you're probably going to struggle a little bit with these as well. So I'll include a video below that includes basic adjusting entries as well. Uh, let's do one more scenario in this practice. So we have get that bad company that paid $2,000 of rent in advance. Now pause. They're paying rent in this case. So if we're paying rent, we are now the tenant right? So we are going to be analyzing rent used by us. Let's just say us. I know not the cleanest way of saying it, but let's look at the rent that we used. And then let's look at the rental months remaining. I'm going to put that on two lines just to keep it a little cleaner. All right. So rent used by us, um, they're telling us that $500 in rent. And actually, let me fill in my, my uh, item. So rent expense is one. And keep in mind, if we're paying in advance, that is prepaid rent. That's only when we are the ones paying in advance. Prepaid, all right. So they're telling us that we put it into rent expense, okay. Now they're saying that at the end, we don't have to calculate the months. They're telling us how much was unexpired. Let's ask ourselves, unexpired rent, is that the rent we use during the year? Or is that the rental months we have remaining? add months in there. All right. So if we're saying this is unexpired, this is what we have remaining for next year. So we have 500 remaining, which means we used up how much? 2000 minus 500. So we used up 1500. We have 500 of that 2000 remaining for next year. Mm -mm. There we go. All right, so um, let's let's do the rent used by us. So rent used by us, uh, whatever we use, we have to expense. So we currently have $2,000 in rent expense, but we don't want to have $2,000 in rent expense. We want to have $1,500. So how are we going to bring that balance from $2,000 to $1,500? We're going to credit it for $500. I know this is so fun. And then uh, rental months we have remaining prepaid rent. That's an asset. So it's currently at zero. 
we have $500 worth of rent left though. So we want to show that asset on our books. So how are we going to bring it from zero to 500? Debit it for $500. All right. So I know that these can be a little confusing at first. It's really challenging to kind of get your head in the right mindset. Um, a lot of this is going to take mostly critical thinking above all else. So I have several scenarios that I added to this particular page on the website. If you need to review this, if you need to review basic adjusting entries, take your time. This is a topic that 100% practice makes perfect. The more you practice it, the more sense it's going to make in your head. Okay. So um, until next time, keep up the great work. And as always, happy studying.